Welcome to Naked Talk with Jess, where we're all about shedding shame around our bodies and sex and sharing that all areas of our life are interconnected and they affect the other. So we really want to take that holistic perspective in all areas of our life. Super excited about today's episode. But before I share who we're going to be getting naked with for some candid combos, I want to remind you that you are worthy and it's so important to take time for yourself, mental health, physical health, spiritual and emotional health. And especially as the year is starting to wrap up, things can get crazy. I've shared before in episode one, some of my story losing my brother, and around the holidays especially, it can be a hard time, and it's not always easy having grief and holidays. So take that time, do what you need to do, get counseling, see a therapist, lean on your friends or family, but I really encourage you to do that. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode of Naked Talk with Jess. I don't want you to miss out, and I also want to hear what you love, what you want to hear more about, so please do that. You can find me on Instagram at Naked Talk with Jess. I'd love to carry on the conversation with you there. So a little bit about Marlon Esparza. She is from Houston, Texas, which is where I live, and she was the first American woman to qualify for the 2012 Olympics. And that was the first year that women's boxing was actually an Olympic event. In that Olympic, she won the bronze medal. And she's also the first woman signed by Golden Boy. And her fight coming up, she will be on the Canelo card. And there's one of only two women fighting in a three-minute round. And this is the first time it's been done. So she is breaking barriers and making history. But I want to talk beyond boxing and the belt. I wanted to talk to her about life as a mom, how that's changed her body and her mind, how that's also affected her relationship and her marriage, and we talk about intimacy in there as well. And so we have a really great conversation, and I think it's so important for us to go beyond just what we see from people on the outside. And if you can probably relate, if you're juggling you know, marriage and a family and a career, or even if you're not married or have children, you might be constantly struggling with what people think you should do and what you really want to do and your passion and desire and what sacrifice does that take. So I really want you to be thinking about how this relates to your life as you hear our naked talk. So let's get naked with Marlon Esparza. All right, so I'm here with Marlena Sparza, and she's right here from Houston, Texas. Woo woo! And she is an Olympic medalist boxer. And um, but we're gonna find out what's behind that boxing, Marlene. We're gonna have some candid conversations about the real Marlene and all the stuff that maybe people aren't seeing behind the scenes. So welcome to Naked Talk with Jess podcast. I'm glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> all right. So we'll go ahead and talk about, you know, the, the thing that's coming up is November 2nd. That's a pretty big deal, right? Yeah. So already it was pretty cool to see you call play ball at the World Series. Um, the first game was J.J. Watt, so that's not too shabby. So, hey, that's awesome. But you're not only breaking barriers and making history, you're also setting an example for moms and young women and girls And there's so much more behind that. And here on Naked Talk with Jess podcast, we want to share the stuff that people are struggling with, but they're not always sharing about out of fear, shame, or guilt, just so we know we're not alone, right? So um, we want to get to know you as, yes, the boxer, but also behind that, a wife, a mom, um, and, and that competitor, and how that all areas of your life are interconnected. And I'm sure you've seen that. It's not just winning the fights and then going home. There's so much that, um, that affects that. So I want to know, um, as a mom, what is something now that you've had 
become a vow that you've had your son become a mom that you just were not expecting to happen to your body that you were like, girl, I really wish someone would have told me that. And you could be candid. We're all friends here on the Naked Talk with Jess podcast. Well, yeah, I'm a pretty honest person, so it's fine. The I would say the whole experience was just, you know, really hard to begin with. And I feel like no one prepares you. And it's just, it's just that way. You know, no one can really tell you how extreme it gets. But for my body, because I'm so in tune with it and I've, I'm so in tune with my body because of everything that I've done my entire life that I just didn't, I didn't expect any of it. You know, it was my body was doing things that I had no idea it could do, you know, and they're like, your body's going to change. It's like, that's, they tell you, but no one really explains that your body changes, like to the point where I don't even feel, I didn't feel like it was me anymore. So it was like my muscles would, you know, my joints and stuff were like looser and they say like you expand, but it was more about whenever I was thinking, oh, it expands and it's just going to come right back. To exactly how it was and they don't tell you that that's not necessarily the case and that it's actually really painful you know um the process is painful of hurting and your joints getting back to where they need to be and then they're never going to be the way they were so it's always gonna it's going to be different and I had to kind of accept the fact that my body wasn't the same and it's been through more than it had before and I don't think anybody really tells you they're like oh my body wasn't the same and it changed you change but they don't really tell you like so it changes to somewhere to to a point where you never knew it. So you kind of have to get to know yourself again in a weird way. And it gets it's you know, it gets depressing sometimes because you're just you weren't prepared. But I don't think it's anything that really anybody can prepare you for. So it's kind of hard to say, why didn't anybody tell me? Because I don't think you can explain it as, as when it just happens. Yeah, and I, I agree, and I think it's something um, something that I share is that I lost myself in motherhood, um, homeschooling my three girls. I'd, um, I've been through a lot of trauma in my life, and then I thought, oh, it's great. You know, I have a wonderful husband now, and then I just ended up losing myself in motherhood, and I think a lot of that was those body changes, and then like we were saying earlier, not being able to talk to people about it because you're supposed to be this happy mom, and you have this beautiful baby, and... Um, and you're supposed to be happy, right? Because the baby's healthy and happy. So I think it's important that we do talk about that. Um, and something that we like to talk about on Naked Talk with Jess is shedding that shame around our body. And especially for women around our sexual areas, you know, our, like we always say, you know, it's not all just a vagina down there. There's a vulva, there's a clitoris, there's all of these parts. But because we're not talking about this growing up, it makes it even harder to talk about that when something's going wrong. So... I, I love that more and more people can start sharing these feelings about that. Um, and then along that line, um, with sharing feelings and communication, um, when you're fighting and you're traveling a lot and you're putting your body through all this, I would love to know how are you keeping that intimacy and that relationship with your husband, and especially after having a baby, you know, sex changes, your body changes. Um, now you have this little life to uh, fit into your schedule. So is there anything that you do to keep that intimacy um, with with your husband? No, I would say, yeah, I do. And I'm still learning right now. You know, my baby's nine months old. But it is it was a, a process because, again, I started to get to know myself again. So not only was I having to get to know myself, but my husband had to watch me get to get to know myself. And whenever I was going through whatever I was going through uh, mentally, it was a struggle um, between me and him because he thought something was wrong or that there's something like he could fix or it's it's him. And it's like it has nothing to do with you. And it sounds kind of mean, but it's like not everything is about you. And sometimes things are about me and I just had a full baby. So you're going to have to, I just made a human. So you're going to have to give me time to process what's going on with me. And I think it's really hard for husbands or, you know, a significant others or whatever to kind of understand that there's a huge dimension that they're not going to ever understand. And I think that with that, um, you know, sex was hard at the beginning because that was the last thing I was worried about. So I think guys are always worried about that constantly. And I think that with me and my husband, it was hard at the beginning because he thought that 
I was mad or maybe we're never going to have the same sex life that we had before. And I was on the opposite thinking, why does it, why is that such a priority for you? You know, like, and then it would make it worse because it was like, instead of sex being something enjoyable, I felt like it was like something that was forced like on me, like, okay, this is a duty or a job. And it's like, okay, I had to tell him like, I'm going to need time, you know, and I'm really going through things right now. And it's just something that you're going to have to understand. But then the guilt kicks in. So it's like you feel like you're a bad wife or whatever it might be that comes in with your relationship when, you know, sex is becoming an issue because it's such a big part of of a relationship. But I really just had to kind of take a step back and remember that, one, he doesn't know. Right. So I can't be angry at him for not understanding because he's never going to understand what it feels like to change and to have a baby and the emotional strain and physical strain that comes with it. They see it, but they don't understand it. And two, I had to remember and remind myself that like he's a I married him and he's the father of my child and I do love him. But I was so consumed with my own issues that I really feel like. I wasn't appreciating him enough because I was so stuck in my own head. And once I allowed myself to just keep appreciating him and be grateful that I have him, and that's when, you know, the sex kind of had its ups again because it was like, it wasn't a duty. It was like, I love you and I'm trying to show you that I love you and more of like an appreciation of of the fact that it's not your fault that you don't get it, um, but I, I, I'm really grateful for you, and I think that was kind of my way of, you know, moving forward. Yeah, and I, and that's one thing that um, we, we talk about on here is being able to communicate those things because men see it differently, just like you said, and a lot of times they're... Um, they're seeing that as, oh, she doesn't want me or something's going on. And it's important to have that communication even outside of the bedroom. And then to be able to talk about those things, um, not just when you're having sex, right, or not having sex, and sharing that, hey, I love you. I'm here for you. Um, I love that you're being honest and you're saying, I don't know. I'm figuring this out. It's your first time going through this. And more couples need to be able to, once again, going back to that shedding that shame around that um, sex in our bodies, we need to go back to be able to speak openly with our partner. And there are ways to be intimate without just sex. And a lot of times we just think of sex as penis and your vagina and intercourse, you know? Yeah. And that's how we were kind of raised seeing, thinking about it. But it's not the case. There's other ways that you can be intimate and keep that. So I love that you're working on that together. And I think that's going to be a good example for other um, young women and and moms as well going through it. Um, That's so important to keep that communication going. Um, So what about, so if there was anything that you wanted to share with other moms, I know we talked about our body changing and it's just, it's one of those things, right? You, you don't know until you go through it, but is there something you would tell moms that, um, they've had their babies, maybe they had a few or they're still little, um, maybe they're not competitors, you know, or pro, pro athletes, but they're trying to figure this thing out, um, that I like that you've shown that you can have a baby and it doesn't have to take your passion away. Is there any advice you would share with them on, hey, I don't know if I'm, you know, if I need to give everything up. Now I have these little humans in my life. What, what's something you can share with them to keep going for their passion, whatever it may be? I would tell anybody who um, still wants to continue on doing what they're doing or doing what they love and being a mom, that that's not wrong, you know? I think that's your initial, everybody's initial take on it is that you have to choose, like you have to choose um, or one is not going to get 100%. And I feel like that's what you have to, that 50% is 100%. So if you're doing as much as you can, then that's 100% like enough. So I think everyone's like, it's either all or nothing and it doesn't need to be that way. There's, I don't know where we got that from or why we think that way, but you know, 50%, 25%, it can still be a hundred percent. You just have to learn to be okay with dividing your time up. And it's, you know, it doesn't mean that you're any less, less, um, invested or you're not, you know, you're lesser than you were before. It just means that you have more things to worry about and that's it. You know, you just have more on your plate. It's not that big of a deal. And I don't think, um, women need to be so hard on themselves. 
because I feel like we've already fought to kind of be able to do what we want and have kids. You know, that was that was a big stage for women learning to have their own career and have their own life and then also be a mom. And I don't think that we should have to feel guilty about it. And it's just, you know, it's okay that that you're doing more than one thing at a time and it doesn't mean that you're going to be a bad mom. Yeah, I love that. And I know for me personally, when um, when my husband, I've tried it, I've been through that, I lost myself in motherhood. I thought, no, I, I need to give up these things. And he noticed me kind of going down. He noticed I wasn't happy. And now I've decided when I'm with my children or my husband, I'm going to be 100% present with them or him. And then I can feel better about doing these other things, keeping those thousand tabs open in our mind, as we often do as women. Um, and so I love that you're sharing that. No to mom guilt. It's over. We don't need it. So um, I do. Oh, you know yeah, I was actually good because it reminded me. I was actually, um, I went on my first vacation with Saint and my husband after uh, my second fight back from having the baby. And I remember I was thinking, I told my husband, I don't think it's a good idea because I have too many things I need to do, you know, and I don't get to see my son a lot. So then I was like, I need to go on this vacation because I need to spend more time um, with both of them. But at the same time, I was like, I have too many things to do and then I'm going to jump right back into a fight and it's going to put me behind. And so it was this huge struggle. And I was at this, I was at the swimming pool when I was on vacation and I ran into this lady and she just started talking to me because my son's really cute and she was just (laughs) talking to me about my son. And uh, she had said, um, long story short, she had got to the point and she was like, I work and I do this and it's hard. And she was like, but really all you have to remember that it's about quality over quantity. So it was like that really helped me a lot because I was like the times that I I am with him, I'm going to make sure that. You know, I'm present and I'm I'm making eye contact with him and I'm, you know, he knows that I'm fully engaged with him and I'm not, you know, trying to do other things while I'm with him. And it's really helped me a lot because I feel like the time that I do have, it's more valuable because he knows when I'm there, I'm there. Yes, I, I agree 100%. And, um, I think that's some, some good things to do. I do want to touch real quick on mental health. I know that's important to you as well. Um, I've shared in the past podcast about my brother and um, other other family members that have mental health. And can you tell me real quick about um, where where that passion comes from? And then also, I know that you help with um, okay to say as well. I would really like our listeners to know about that, especially if they're struggling with things and they're still having that fear, shame, or guilt that it's not okay to talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Okay to Say is um, is a nonprofit that really just lets people know, and it's uh, really drives the idea of people understanding that not everybody's okay, and that it's okay to say that you're not okay, and it's not anything that you need to be ashamed about. That uh, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there, and you need to realize that everybody around you is going through things, and that no one really needs to be ashamed of it. That. Everybody that you know has struggled at one point or another mentally about what's going on in life. And I think that, um, you know, it's a, it's a really positive note to send to people that everybody you know has struggled. Not everybody's perfect. So it's okay if you're not okay at the time to just say, you know, that I'm not okay right now and let everybody know that that's something that's going on with you. To, so it's not so harsh when people actually want to say it out loud. Uh, but I, it's something that I've been... Um, Really, I wouldn't say passionate about, but it's I've struggled with depression my entire life and anxiety, so it kind of goes hand in hand. But that's something that I've had since before I can remember, and it's just it's just who I am. And so when I was younger, I used to think that something was wrong with me, or why is everybody always happy, or why does it seem like everybody always has it together? And then once you make real deep friendships, you find out you know people also struggle. But at the same time, I felt like I still struggled more and a lot more constant than most people. And it was something that I'm just, you know, that's been big in my life. And it's been something that I have to overcome, you know, every single day. And then on top of it, I decided to add, you know, women's boxing into it, which was harder to me. You know, I felt like I chose... I already have um, more of like a depressed personality and a more, you know, a a darker way of thinking. And then, boom, you add in so many obstacles and problems and adversity, and it made things a lot harder for me growing up. So because of that, I really like to focus on the fact that kids, especially because I feel like if I was younger and someone would have taught me that 
it's normal or, you know, this is how it works and this is how you are. And then there's nothing really wrong with you. I feel like if I would have learned that at an early age, then I would have been a lot better now than I was. And I feel like kids need to understand that, what they're feeling and know what they're feeling and how to deal with it instead of just trying to box it up and hope that it goes away. And so to me, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah, and I I like that. And just starting, uh, once again, on the podcast, we just want to have those candid conversations and start them so people can, one, say, hey, I'm not alone, and two, not have that fear, shame, or guilt about it and know that there's resources out there. So I will definitely share that on the show notes. Um, Okay to say, um, I think it's TX, isn't it? Okay to say, Austin, Texas. And then um, before we wrap up, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure to meet you and you're going to be on the Canelo card and one of um, two women that are going to be the three minute round which is Correct. really cool so <laughs> yeah. that's another barrier um, that, that you're breaking and um, so that's coming up November 2nd so yes. I will be definitely watching you here from H-Town and cheering you on <laughs> thank, thank you thank you so thank much thank you alright bye bye a great conversation with Marlene Esparza, and it gave us a great glimpse into a little bit of her life beyond her belt and boxing. Be sure to subscribe to Naked Talk with Jess so you'll know about future podcast episodes. You can find me on NakedTalkWithJess.com. I'd love to hear your questions or comments. There's a microphone to the right on the homepage. You just click it, send me your message, and we might be able to play it on the show. Make sure that you connect with me on Instagram at Naked Talk with Jess. When you're listening to the podcast, screenshot a picture of you wherever you are or your phone screen and be sure to tag me at Naked Talk with Jess. I'd love to share it on my stories. Until the next time, take care and remember, shed that shame around your bodies and sex. Bye.